Hi there. It's been quite a few weeks since I've checked in. Uh, it's uh, currently Friday, February 18th. It's about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, just uh, sort of impulsively deciding to do a rando update. Um, not going to be anything too extensive. Definitely not going to be organized. I uh, actually have a, a very close friend in town this weekend, and um, he is meeting with the woman that is the reason that we know one another right now. So before he comes back, I'm just trying to kind of capitalize on some really amazing energy that's going through me at this exact moment. It's a frequency, it's a, it's a vibration that <laughs> has been rare to find in uh, certainly the past six months. The past six months for me, six, seven months has been incredibly intense as I've shared multiple times in recent videos. Um, dark night of the soul in, in, in just ways that uh, have really shocked me because certain things that are coming back to the surface and certain issues and certain wounds that are reopening, honest to God, I, I really thought I was at peace with some of these things. I really didn't think uh, something could happen present day that would still trigger it and throw me back to the version of myself when I was handling some of these things and these relationships and these dynamics, uh, when the pain was greatest and the wound was like gaping and bleeding, metaphorically speaking. Um, so it's it's been a tremendous amount of internal work. Um, there are insane amounts of external reasons as well why I have been relatively so silent. Um, one thing I did want to drop right here. So. I remember, you know, whoever the infamous they is, uh, you know, it used to be said, let's just put it that way. It's not really a they that said it. It used to be said that as you kind of matured into adulthood, I remember hearing this, you know, there's three things you never talk about at a party or a gathering. You know, if you want to keep the peace and don't rock the boat, don't talk about money, religion slash spirituality or politics. And ever since this pandemic horseshit hit, um, I haven't owned a TV since 2008, so I have been massively catching up on the political side of those threes, the political leg, if you will, and the insane amounts of narratives and, and things going on and people that have been really called to and focused for either a year, two years, or in some cases, 10, 15, 20 years, where that's their focus, that's their expertise, that's what the information that they have, that's what their experience has been, that's what their journey has been. And obviously, oodles and oodles and oodles of people have started new YouTube channels and all the various social media outlets in the past couple of years for all sorts of reasons if not only to keep our sanity, because to, the, to a great degree, our connections with one another have been you know, severed in a lot of cases, quite literally our physical connections to one another. So unfortunately, fortunately, we've got this thing called the computer and the internet left and it's um, a lot of people have turned to it uh, to share, to express, to try to, you know, in some cases warn or persuade, again, across the spectrum. So you've got that honor. That is definitely not my honor. That's not what my journey has been. I don't, I have known since 9-11, there was no difference between red and blue. I have not participated in the system at all. I think it's horribly corrupt. And I have said also going back all nine plus years on my YouTube channel that I have been about our attention is everything. That's perhaps one of the biggest ways that we feed something, let alone our actions and our money, but our attention, our energy, our mind. What are we feeding with that? And I've vowed I am giving as little attention to the world that I don't want to participate in, that doesn't move me, that is horrible and evil, and I want to focus on being the change. I want to focus on living the only thing I can control, which is my own life to the nth degree and being that change. And that means I can't spend, expend any energy over here. I need to focus all of my energy here, which is why I've been hyper-focused on my little company of me and trying to align my life where I am not tapped into that paradigm, you know, as little as possible. Okay. So the politics thing, not my area. Not what I'm intended to share, not the info. I'm not your person with that. Then we hit into the spirituality religious. And so the, the networks, there's two networks that I've sort of 
been walloping, you know, like really blown into in the past couple of years called the truthers, like generally speaking, the truther movement, and then generally speaking, the spiritualists, right? Or the spiritual sort of movement. The truthers, if I were to sort of oversimplify this, they're the ones focused on the politics and you got good and bad people and you got good and bad within everything. So it, it like I've said before, it's a minefield. It, it is it, the magnitude and skill set of discernment that one needs to navigate living right now, especially if one's awake. If one's asleep and you're still following everything the mainstream says, well, then you know, you're not doing the work of having to navigate what really is truth, what really is real, who really is telling the truth and who really is lying. It, it, it's a minefield. And so within that truth or network, they're sort of focused more, generally speaking, oversimplified on the politics. The spiritual side, which I have said, and, and again, I don't like aligning to any group. I've said before, for nine years, I've been saying it. I'm on everybody's team and I'm on nobody's team. One day I might say something and somebody might be, damn, that's exactly like totally aligned with her. The next day I could express something that completely, and in our world right now where it's all the spectrum, it's all bipolar and, and duality, and we're still as a whole so unbelievably be immature in our ability to hold space for, oh, I agree with this person here and I don't agree with them here. It's all or nothing. I've known this for nine years that, that I'm on everybody's team and nobody's team. So don't pigeonhole me. Don't put me on any, on any one group. Don't identify me with any group. I am Allison. That's all I've ever been. That's all I'll ever be in this life. I'm Allison. I'm sharing Allison's journey. I was identifying for lack of a better way of trying to explain what it is I've been trying to do for 10 years in the spiritual world, if you will. Now, I can tell you without going further on this tangent, I don't want anything, I don't, definitely don't want to be identified within that world because to me, it's a particular type of evil when you're manipulating within that world and you're talking the game and you're talking and using all the words, but when it comes down to it, you're not anything different and you're actually just using and manipulating people and being an opportunist. That to me, when you're messing with people's faith and their belief in something bigger, I think there's a particular place, uh, it, karmically speaking, and when you do your life review for people that are playing that. And, you know, again, no judgment, everybody's got a role, but I certainly have learned massive amounts of discernment of what I just don't want my life to be. And, and the people I don't want anywhere near me that are claiming, and what I have found is that spiritual world is actually the most dangerous world in what I've experienced. They are obviously more aligned to the, to the big no-no that you don't talk about, religion and spirituality, right? When you start talking about faith and beliefs and the whole nature of it is stuff you can't see and can't point to. So it, 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 it's nebulous. It's, it's not something that's provable, which makes it so much more complex and challenging, okay? So, and, and what's been hard for me is I've been sharing my journey for nine years and sharing it with innocence, naivety, to be certain, especially early on, but I'm not trying to and again, hey, no judgment if you want to profit and, and you know, make a million and, and claim that it's all about abundance and anybody who doesn't want to be a millionaire is in lack. That's horse shit. OK, but if you want to play that game and manipulate it and charge people four hundred dollars for an event and, and, and treat them like you're you're so much better than them and pretend that you're actually speaking truth and spirituality, that's on you. That's not the game of spirituality that I want to be a part of. And I have so far experienced much more of that, especially with the people that are bigger, fame, more famous. It's like the Hollywood version of spirituality is what I talk about. And I'm not interested in that. I'm not looking to be idolized. I'm not idolizing anybody. I'm looking for authenticity and to be real. And I'm certainly not looking to be better than anybody. I'm looking to, we have all have different experiences. Some of us have been on, you know, aware and awake for longer, which makes it, you know, it, it reminds me of when I was a teacher and I used to tell my sixth graders, I'm not going to sit up here in front of you and pretend like I'm all high and mighty and going to use a power structure because I'm the teacher and you're the student. I'm just an adult and you're a kid. So I've had more years navigating this thing called life, but I don't know, you know, I really don't know all that much more than you because trust me, when it comes to the breadth of knowledge, none of us know shit. I didn't say that to him, but you know what I mean? So uh, spirituality, 
it's been really hard because I have found myself not even wanting to get in that game. It's like, I'm not going to try to compete with you people. I don't give a shit. I've never been in this for the number of likes or for the number of followers or for the number of subscribers. I've been in this to actually, I'm ready to live this. I'm not interested in the word, the words matter, but I'm interested in living this. I'm interested in being this. I'm interested in co-creating a world of this, not just talking about it and trying to manipulate and be better than others who aren't able to talk about it or who are new to the language so that they're more more manipulable, more manipulatable, manipulate, whatever the word is, you know, like I'm not in that game. So that's been really hard for me because that was, that was what my whole channel was, was sharing my spiritual journey. That's what my whole channel still is, but I haven't, you know, and, and partly because of that, but also because I have been diving into all of these new things that have been triggered as a result of entering that spiritual world at a literal global level. And you all know that was through Mark Atwood's course. Through that course, I literally expanded my spiritual connections to places and people across the globe and exponentially widened what my reality was, what I was tapping into. And it has just, you know, I'm overly sensitive. I'm still not the best at protecting myself. I'm super trusting and I, I get excited. So I'm like, I don't have the boundaries that I'm, I'm still really new at learning how to have appropriate boundaries for myself. And so you put that all together and it's just been, I got my hands full in terms of realigning myself while the world is continuously getting even crazier by the minute, let alone by the day. So this brings me to what is my the third, right? So truther, politics, not my, not what I'm here for. Don't come to my channel to get all the facts on that. I don't have it. I don't want to. It's not what I'm here. It's not my role on the team. The spirituality and the religion, that is, but a lot of folks and people I like that are speaking of it from a higher perspective, my focus has been living that at the hyper-focused level of my life, taking these general concepts, these general remembrances, this general thing called spirituality and, and, and beliefs and truths that are, I believe, universal for every being in form, whether they want to believe it or not, or see it or not. But then my whole thing has been hyper-focused for 10 years, my spiritual journey, not me trying to pretend like I'm spiritual, some spiritual guru that I want you out there, somebody who stumbles upon me and likes my vibe or likes what I'm saying, or I say something that resonates with them. I'm not looking for you to follow me. I'm looking to guide you to your own power within yourself. So that means that that arena is not really what I've learned where I'm supposed to be dancing either right now the arena I'm supposed to be dancing in is the third and final of those three and the whoppers of what you don't talk about. And that's the money. And why is that? And how am I uniquely positioned to talk about that? Is because I took a literal damn near six-figure leap of faith. $96,480 is what I capped out on. And I had a six figure, $100,000 limit of debt that I would incur in order to launch my little company of me and my very big vision. When I started this on November 30th, 2012 with a written blog. And then on July, January 1st, 2013 is when my company of Alice and Irene Nune LLC became legal and official. I had a vision. I still have the same vision. The same thing has been guiding me since that point. Nothing <laughs> of the original take of launching that went as planned. And somebody who had never had debt ended up as I used 0% credit with a plan. It was a very loose plan, purposely loose, but there was a whole lot of conscious awareness of what I was doing. And starting my company with $50,000 of pay it for investments in others. Okay. Ultimately, it was an investment in my own vision. But I was vowing that my company from day one, moment one, was going to be, yes, within this paradigm and legal within this paradigm. But I was playing a different game. I wasn't, I was within that game, but I was vowing to be different for real from the ground. And how did I start that? 
I started by instead of asking for investment, I began my company's operations with pay it forward investment into others, very consciously believing that one of the biggest things that needed to change was our entire dynamic relationship, understanding actions surrounding and pertaining money, this thing we call money. Nothing went right. One year after all the credit cards began coming due, 0% credit cards, Allison had to not only face the consequences, which were very, very, very fucking real, I had to, in order to face said consequences, re-enter the world, which I kind of naively, admittedly, naively, like a child, never thought I was going to have to work for somebody else again, thought I was like, it was, it was innocent, it was pure, it was naive, but I had dedicated the rest of my life to something bigger than me and to align to my role within that on the human team. And as a, virt- as a, as a consequence of leaping so big, that bigger thing has been in the driver's seat of my car beyond me, the higher aspect of me, God, whatever you want to call it has been in the driver's seat, but I'm in the passenger seat of my own car. I would argue that That one energy, whatever you call it, that's greater than us, but of which we are all unique expressions is in the driver's seat or should be in the driver's seat of all of our cars, all of our vehicles, because we are ultimately servants to that. At least, again, that's my personal take and look, and that's what I'm trying to align to. I am trying to, though, remembering that I and Allison still has free will and has the responsibility and the accountability to make choices as Allison but trying to follow the guidance of that, which is more bigger, beyond, well beyond just Allison. I'm on the other side of that debt in huge ways, as I've mentioned multiple times, not just a little bit. I'm on the other side of that in such huge ways. The only way that that would be possible is if indeed something much bigger than me had my back. Okay, one of my favorite quotations, Shakti Gawain, the universe will reward you for risks you take on its behalf. You better believe that was one ginormous risk I took on its behalf, and it has rewarded me because it has had my back. That does not mean it has been easy. It has been anything but easy. Okay, it has not gone as planned. I thought it would take one year. I'm on year nine, and I am still not even close yet to supporting myself by doing ultimately doing the work that I I see for myself and the role that I'm in. But right now, the part that I can share, the part I'm intended to share, the part that I've been terrified to share because of the amount of judgment and criticism that will come at me as a result of sharing. And the it, 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 it's so, it's uncomfortable. Even people that will agree with certain things that I say or, or everybody is pretty much uncomfortable sharing publicly and talking about money, okay? But it's time, folks, because none of it's real anyway. It's all a damn illusion. It all comes down to energy. And I believe we are, at least we have the opportunity to blow through this concept of money and to evolve beyond it. But we can't evolve beyond it without going through the journey through it. That is what my forte is. That is what I have spent the past 10 years, not just going, not just studying. I have experienced it. I can share this. This isn't just words. This isn't just me me, me, making shit up. I literally took a six-figure leap of faith. Sorry, $96,480 leap of faith, a leap of faith. My family wanted me committed. They thought I was insane. Okay. They still think I'm insane. They still probably think I need to be committed. I don't give a shit. I'm on the other side and it's time I get the courage to fully begin to share that story because it's too important. It's one of the big three, religions, politics, religion, spirituality, politics, and money. If we don't start having the tough conversations and start having these we're going to be, we're, we're doomed and destined to keep repeating this insanity. And I, I, I for one, want out of this. I want out of this reality. I know we can do better. Um, and I also know it's up to us. It's up to the individuals and we are the change. We have to be the change. And I think it's undeniable that how we use this, the, how we see value how we exchange value, how we handle this thing called money and all the variations of it. 
it's part it's part of what needs to be discussed and that you better believe i've got expertise and experience in that and i i just have to be fearless and that that's what i think i'm that's what i know is time for me to begin sharing right now um a little bit more directly and without being afraid so i've even wanted to do a video like this for probably two three months now and still couldn't find the timing or the energy to even put this out there, even at this high level general, general, you know, kind of description. So totally impulsive, wasn't planning on doing the video, but kind of glad that I did. And uh, yeah, so there's an update. That's where things are. And I don't know how exactly I'm going to begin talking about it. Um, I, I just know that I need to. So I hope everybody is maintaining as much sanity as they can. I hope everybody is continuing to take as good a care of themselves as possible. I, for one, I know, man, I, I am extremely positive person. And I, I seriously, even in all the years of depression and downness that I had in my teenage years and pretty much my whole decade of my 20s, I, I don't quite remember a, a, a two year period like this has been. Um, the, the, the challenge it is every day right now to get myself upbeat and positive and hopeful amidst the insanity. And to remember where there's insanity, there's also tons of beauty and magic and, and, and amazingness. And uh, my friend being here, um, my good friend E over in Germany, my good friend Jay in Australia, um, you know, you all, uh, whew, no words to express what these three individuals have been for me this past year, but especially uh, in recent weeks and months. And the, con you know, the conglomerate of all that energy in these past, and, and again, Jay is here now, and uh, it's a big reason, I think, why I feel was felt, I felt good enough and inspired enough to capture this. So, okay. Much love to everybody and we'll see you again whenever I'm called to. Have a good day.